Hey guys, welcome back to the Hewlett Packard Spectrum Analyzer project. When we last left off, I was trying to dig into the CPU and interface board here in the hopes of getting the control panel working. We didn't. Perhaps I need to replace the 68230 chip. Jury's still out on that because I don't know if the status lights are coming up like they're supposed to or not. There's 14 LEDs on here. They all turn on, they all turn off. I don't know if the sequence of them turning off is right or not. Okay, moving on. I'd mentioned that we're missing the t internal 10 megahertz oscillator. And I was thinking this was a high precision option and if you didn't install this, there was a low precision 10 megahertz oscillator somewhere. But no, I don't think that's the case. I don't think there's any oscillator. So, based on some viewer suggestions, I'm feeding one in. And I was told a 10 megahertz sine wave from 0 to 10 dBm would be sufficient. So we're going to use my Hewlett Packard 8662A. I already dialed in to 10 megahertz plus 5 dBm going into the external reference in the back of this unit. And I flip the switch to external reference. Power this up. Now I want to be clear too about this display. If I leave this plugged in to a live outlet and have it turned off so it's in the standby mode. When I turn it on, this display does not come up. I have to fully power cycle it. And if I turn it off and back on, the display is going to be blank again. So that's definitely an outstanding issue. But if I do that from a cold start, turn it on, the display should come up. And... <laughs> I already did this once so I knew what to expect. Yes, having that reference oscillator makes a big difference. Now somebody had queried, hey, maybe the CPU uses that same clock for its oscillator, but no, there's a crystal oscillator on the board right next to the CPU. But yes, it's doing a whole lot more now. For one, we have more info on the screen, and of course we've got this noise floor here. Uh, sideways, I'll read it for you. So, we now have reference. It says 0 0.0 dBm up top, attenuation 10 dB, external reference. Interesting. And I did this before. Remember, we had a red LED on this that said 249 unlock. When I powered this up the first time with the reference, it also said 249 unlock in the upper right hand corner. That error is gone. In fact, we don't have we don't have any errors. You know, the, we had we had a couple of red LEDs before, so we have a couple here: high pass, uh, yellow flickering, yellow flickering here top. I think those are right. I think the deal is yellow LED is fine, red LED bad. So we got a few that are flickering, but I think that just means it's like starting to sweep over again. And. It's sweeping the full range, so 0 to 1.5 gigahertz. I'm thinking that all these settings on here is like the factory default. And the text here says HPIB address 0P16, copyright HP 1984, 8568B, Rev 7.4.87. I surmise this was made in 87, so I think that's what that means. On the bottom, we got res bandwidth 3 megahertz, V bandwidth 1 megahertz, sweep 20 milliseconds. Oh, hey, I never saw that before either. We have a new thing. We have a flashing LED down here, sweep. Continuous single. Now I've tried pushing buttons on the keypads a moment ago, and they didn't do anything. Now I'm wondering. The other way. If I push those buttons down there where it says continuous sweep, now that we have a light on. Oh, holy crap. Holy crap. And so now it's single. So, yeah, wow, that actually works. Every time I push this button, it you see the display changing. It's sweeping. So I'm not feeding any signal into this thing. So let's change that right now. There is a built-in reference, 20 megahertz minus 10 dB on the front of uh, this guy. So let's see, that's a coax here. I'm going to go right from that to the input. 
Uh, I would think we're going to see a line at 20 megahertz. Now this is doing a huge sweep, a 1.5 gigahertz sweep from one side of the screen to the other. So 20 is going to be near the top edge here and just a really thin line if we get anything. Oh, <laughs> that's right, it's on. So, <laughs> oh yeah, but I got to hit the button. Okay, there is a little smudge now near the top. Well, it's sleeping over a huge range, so I wouldn't expect to see too much, but uh, that one there before. I'm going to disconnect the reference again. It's single sweep. And yeah, it's gone. Let me put it back. Oh, and actually it comes all the way up to here. And then there's a little bit down there. But yeah, there that's I'm pretty sure that's very likely 20 megahertz. Okay, you do any other buttons or anything? Well, let's put this back in continuous if I can. Yes. Went back into continuous mode. Well. Maybe this thing is slowly creaking back to life. I'm almost afraid to push any other buttons, but we have to find out. So clear right. It does, yeah, when I push it, it's doing something. The light doesn't go out. Ah, hold, damn, all these buttons are suddenly working now. These buttons were not working a moment ago. Wow. Okay. Now, how about the big boy, the main panel? Wow. Okay. Damn. Did this thing suddenly just start working? Uh, center frequency, 20 megahertz. Oh, oh, yes, it is working. Wow. Okay, I swear, before I started recording this video, I did the same things, and these buttons were not working. I also noticed now our red light is coming back on over here. So we are getting an error message. Not exactly. But, anyways. Yes, so now I, have, I put the center on 20 megahertz. So now we have our spike in the middle. Let's see if I can... Wait, it's noisy in here with all these fans on. Well, let's turn the lights down, try to get this a little, a little better. And one thing that I don't particularly like is with the intensity. When it's really low, you just get the grid. You have to turn it up pretty bright. I still can't see any of the lettering. To get the lettering, I have to make this brighter than I kind of like it to be. And I wonder if inside there's somewhere. I, I have other devices where there's a separate, like the uh, HP 2465B scope. They have a, I believe they have a separate brightness for the text versus the signal. Because I don't like having it that bright on the signal with the text. Anyways, let's change, let's change the bandwidth for the start and stop frequency. So I'll do a start frequency. Yeah, it changed. Let's do 10 megahertz. And for the stop, let's do 30. So stop, 3, 0 megahertz. Oh, now we got a little blip down in here, 20, basically. That'd be taller, though. Uh, I don't know how to do is change the zoom. Try that. I'm rotating that knob on the front. <laughs> so I rotate the knob, our little blip, that must be the cursor, that little, we got a little dot that's moving now. Oh yeah, and when I stop moving it, or maybe not. Yeah, this thing's slightly unstable. Like the center frequency keeps shifting from 20 to 19.99 megahertz. Not a big deal. The same up here, the counter zoom. Let's well, see, I change the attenuation on this. Oh, I can change the signal input too. I just switched from one input to the other and back. Uh, and now I'm going to tell you how to use this. Yeah, damn, all the buttons on the front. Are now working. I, I honestly, I'm just blindly pushing buttons at this point. But wow, that, that's cool. 
Now the drag is, <laughs> I'm using my 8662 as the reference, otherwise I'd be feeding that into the input on the front and we could play around looking at AM and FM and stuff like that. Uh, so, <laughs> high on my list of to-dos right now is to get a reference oven, or a re reference oscillator. I've seen a whole bunch of the one that Sh Simon Spear showed that fits right in there on the three rubber mounts. Um, but they're not cheap. Cheap as what I've seen is like 65 and they go up to a couple hundred and they're used, the cheaper ones. Uh, should I splurge more and get one that's new old stock? Tested? Probably. But I'm also wondering, that's just one particular model. Like, are there cheaper ones? Like, I don't... For here and now, I wouldn't mind having a quick and dirty cheap one just to, to get this thing doing something. So the deal is, it took me a while to find it, but there's a little connector down in the back there. It must be where you get power for the uh, for the oscillator, and then it goes into that bit of coax, little black connector down there. And then you get these shock mounts, and that's what it sits in. Surely, there's more than one model you can get. So I got to do a little bit of searching and see like what what options are there. Like if I want to spend a lot of money, I want to get the best one for my price range. I don't know the one that he showed is necessarily the best option, in other words. But, wow. Uh, I'm kind of afraid to turn this off now because, well, we might lose it, but let's give it a try. What I mean is I want to turn it off and back on and see if the display comes back to life. So, we're in standby mode. Let's sit for a moment. Turn it back on. Ah, damn, it was the problem all along. Now, I, I still think there's more to it than that. Because, as I said, I, I was playing around a little, little bit before I started recording, and it was not behaving itself as nicely as it is now. One, I had error codes up here. Um, but anyways, just hit the reset button. Yeah, if you hit reset, it gets rid of that copyright message stuff up there. Oh, what can I use for a signal source? Well, I do have older generators, but they're all kind of tucked away. Okay, rearrange things a bit so I can hook up my VG91A Universal Video Generator RF output to the input on this guy. And I'm using the more robust input. It can handle from 100 kilohertz to 1.5 gigahertz, but it can handle some DC offset and I think more power levels than the other input. Should be just fine for this. And yeah, we've got we've got spikes on here. I know you guys are watching everything sideways. Trust me. Now the things that seem to be working, I'm going to be buttoning this back up and stacking the units up. But I want to play around with it for a little bit first. So let's hit the reset button to get that message off the screen. All right. Now that's us going all the way, it's scanning a large range of frequencies. Let's change it from 0 to 100 megahertz or 1 megahertz to 100 megahertz. Start frequency, 1 megahertz, stop frequency, 100 megahertz. Cool. And that makes sense. So I'm on channel 4 right now, which would be I think 54 megahertz carrier or something like that. I'm going to change the channel that we're broadcasting on. This should move up. Yep. Move up. Okay, so here's channel 2. Interesting. So that's one of the things I wanted to check out with this is, yeah, that's cool, channel 2. I'm sure that's right, but we also got junk down here. And we're going to try this out with some cheapo RF modulators, some that all-in-one TV transmitter, and see what is it actually putting out. That's one of the great things you can do with the spectrum analyzer, is see what's outside the band that you're interested in. See how well they made it, because it shouldn't be broadcasting outside its band anyways. There's three, there's four, five. So we get a jump there, from bigger jump. So three to four, bit of a jump to five, and the six. Now there should be a big jump from six to seven. Yeah, it's off the screen. Why? Because there's a gap in some of these channel allocations. So let's change our stop frequency and go all the way up to one gigahertz. So we'll go from 6 to 7, so yeah, that's, 
that goes from there's like a hundred megahertz gap or so or so. And then we go up and up. But we can see there's definitely junk. Oh yeah, and then a big jump from third so we're on channel 13 now, VHF. And we go to 14 UHF an hour, way over here. I forget. There's a gap of several hundred megahertz between the two. So yeah, this this thing is working. This is working. This is very cool. This is very cool. So uh, I'm going to play around with it a bit more. I need to read how to use this actual thing because I want to be able to zoom in closer on stuff. And, and see how I can change the vertical gain if I can. Uh, let's go back to channel 4. Try to zoom in on that better horizontally. And uh, I want to put this back together. I got panels off and screws laying around and stuff. Okay, so now we're getting a much interesting. So that, there's like a strong thing in the middle, and there's a, a mirror image on either side. Because it's interesting to me because in a real NTSC broadcast, you're supposed to suppress one of the sidebands. Not completely, but I don't think they're suppressing anything because we have a mirror image around the center point there. So I think for this piece of the test equipment, they didn't bother with suppressing one of the sidebands and they just left it. So that'd be a AM modulation. But once I got this button back together, now we'll play around with it more and look at AM and FM modulation and stuff like that. I'm kind of curious now with the reference off. It's been powered down for a while. If I turn it on now, are all those same issues going to be there? Is it really just that simple as having a reference? I guess so there's a red LED on inside. There's no reference. And yeah, the display's not coming up. And the buttons don't work. Wow. I never, ever would have figured until I was told better. The not having the reference would mean basic things like the control panels don't work. I would have thought the display would come up and it would say like reference not detected or something like that. You know, some idea what's going on. All right, well, I think I'm going to leave off here. So I got to one read up on how this works, button it up, find an oven or oscillator of some sort, and that battery. They still make them. They look actually quite a bit just like that. I can get them on Amazon, so I think I'll get a new battery for it, too. Uh, and I want to share this with you guys, because, boy, I mean, I <laughs> when I went to bed last night, I was thinking, man, maybe I'll never get this to work, or it's going to take me a lot of money. i got to be, most of the spare circuit boards I've seen online are in Israel and other places around the world. Like, this could be a months-long, hundreds of dollars adventure. But just like that, it seems to be working properly. How cool is that? I still don't recommend you dive into getting one of these <laughs> unless you really want to go through this. Because I think I just got extraordinarily lucky. Uh, there are expensive parts in this. So, yeah, it's one thing to replace some integrated circuits and that, but like the RF input, there's there's an attenuator module of some sort back here, the YIG oscillator. There, there's some hairy RF stuff down in there. That is not trivial to uh, to troubleshoot or replace or calibrate that kind of thing. But yeah, th this is psyched. Uh, this is exciting. So <laughs> that's it for now. I don't want to get this video edited and posted. So thanks for watching.